Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to do a book haul revisit. If you're unfamiliar with this process, basically I take a look back at my book haul from April of 2020 and my book haul from April of 2019 and look at the titles that I brought into my library and try to determine how many of them I have read, how many I still want to read, if there are any I might want to unhaul, things like that. Last month was the first time I did two different years of book hauls because I'm getting to that point in how long I've been on booktube and this is going to be the second time. I am not going to talk about the plots of these books very much. If you are interested in that, I will link the original haul videos down below and you can check out those for more information about the titles and to get more specifics about them. I will say I've done the math on how many of these books I have read and one of them is good and the other is not good. We're going to start with the April 2019 book haul. A quick note, in the original April 2019 book haul, I included two library books, and I am not going to talk about those here, because I'm only going to really talk about the books that are taking up space on my shelf. Just quick note for that. The first book I hauled back then is The Accidental Tourist by Ann Tyler, because I found this old hardcover version of it from my library in the before times, before the pandemic, they sold used books in their lobby, and this was one of them. And I've always been a little bit curious about Ann Tyler, because the only book of hers I've read is Breathing Lessons, which I read when I was 19 or 20. That is her book that won a Pulitzer Prize. She had previously been a finalist for Dinner at the Homesick Restaurant and this book. And I was curious in trying her. I did not like Breathing Lessons, but I, it's something that I'm curious to retry now that I'm a little bit older as part of my Pulitzer Prize project. Maybe I'll like it more. I don't know. I really did not like it at the time I read it, so we'll see what happens with that one. But she is an author that I feel like I should reconsider, hence, you know, this being in my library right now. And I don't have any immediate plans to get to it, but especially since this copy of the book was so cheap and is a decent copy. I feel like it can sit for a while and maybe I'll get to it this year. Maybe I'll get to it next year. I don't know, but I will at some point. That is The Accidental Tourist by Ann Tyler. Next, we have A Pale View of Hills by Kazuo Ishiguro. I have really liked the two books by Kazuo Ishiguro that I have read. They are Never Let Me Go and The Remains of the Day. I hauled Clara and the Sun earlier this year, but that's neither here nor there. I did a book tag back in 2019, where you choose a year, and I chose the year I was born, 1982, which happened to be the year that this was published. So it got me really interested because I hadn't actually known what it was about. I still have not gotten around to reading it, but I didn't have immediate plans to get to it when I brought it in. And I think in a sort of library builder way, I'm happy to have this around whenever I'm ready to jump in and do it. It should be a fairly quick read. It looks only small. Yeah, it's less than 200 pages. So once I have the time, this should be very doable. It's really just a question of finding the time, which I'm sure you can all relate to. <laughs> too many things to read, too many things to do. I would like to get to this at some point. I'm really excited about it, and I'm really excited about reading more of Ishiguro's books. The next one I actually fully intended to get to in June of 2019 and didn't. If you're not familiar, in June I like to read LGBTQ books to celebrate Pride. So I picked up City Boy, My Life in New York During the 1960s and 70s by Edmund White back in 2019 in April, fully intending that I would read it in June. I did not get around to it in June. Because I created a TBR pile, and I was doing a buddy read of the Stonewall Reader, which was edited and put out by the New York Public Library, and that kind of covered a lot of the same bases that this one did, so I decided to hold off on it, thinking I might get to it in June of 2020. Fast forward, or, you know, flashback, however you want to <laughs> think about it. In June of 2020, I ended up throwing out the TBR that I had created for Pride Month, and focusing on Black queer stories and Black queer authors. So this one didn't really fit the brief. So here's the complicating factor for this. I would say it's going on my TBR for June of 2021. However, just this year, I purchased a copy of Edmund White's most famous novel, which is called A Boy's Own Story. So I can put this on my TBR for June of 2021, but I'm much more likely to get to a boy's own story than this one. 
I would still like to get to it. I'm happy to have it on my shelf, happy to support his career, just maybe not this year either. So it, it's going to be what it's going to be. I will get to it someday, I hope. The next one was a total surprise to me. I happened to see it in a store. It's Attic by Catherine Dunn. I have been a big fan of Geek Love, which is her kind of cult favorite novel. And also something I should reread because I feel like over time aspects of that book may seem problematic now and they didn't at the time I read it. But that's a whole other story. Point is, I didn't really think anything else she had written would be in print or would be just out there. And I stumbled on this book. So I picked it up. And it's only small, so it shouldn't be too hard to get to. Yeah, it's total novella size. It's 134 pages. I believe it's a sort of stream of consciousness story about a woman who is arrested for writing a bad check and ends up in prison. And it does not have great reviews online. They are very mixed. But the appeal was really just to see something else that Catherine Dunn wrote. And I really just picked it up in the store without knowing anything about it other than the fact that she wrote it. And I really just didn't think there was anything else of hers out there. So I don't know. Because it's small, I'm inclined to keep it. It's not taking up a whole lot of space on my shelf. But I have to admit, once I looked online and started seeing the reviews, my enthusiasm to read it really diminished a lot. If this were a longer book, I would probably be seriously thinking about unhauling it. But as it is, I'll probably just keep it around and think about it a little more. And if I'm ever really, really cramped for space in a way that this would become a problem, maybe I'll unhaul it. But in the meantime, it's not doing any harm. So I'll probably allow it. The next one is kind of in the same place. I heard of it on BookTube, and I didn't remember at the time I did my book haul who I had seen talking about it. And I was thinking about it before I started recording, and I think it was Mercy from Mercy's Bookish Musings. I could be wrong about that, but she talked about it, and that is what inspired me to pick it up. I had to order it. It's Willa and Hesper by Amy Feltman, and it has this very pretty cover, but in the time since I got it, the urgency to read it has really faded. I couldn't even really tell you what it's about, except that it's about two, I believe, teenage girls who are friends and kind of in love, and then they break up, and it's about what happens after, I believe. Don't quote me on that. If you want, really want to know what it's about, click the link for the original April 2019 book haul. Point just being, I don't quite remember much about it. And again, the enthusiasm has kind of gone down. The reason there was an urgency in 2019 was that I was doing a reading goal where I wanted to read LGBTQ books that emphasized the L, the B, <laughs> the T, and the Q. And get a little bit away from the G, because I'm really good, I have a good track record at books that cover the G, the, the gay experience. And this would have ticked one of those boxes, and I didn't get to it in 2019, so I don't know when I'll get to it again. So this one's kind of looking like it might be headed for an unhaul. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to keep it out, and I'm going to peruse the first few pages and make a decision about whether or not this is something I want to hold on to and try to get to at some point in the future, or if this is something that I might need to just let go. So TBD on this one. The next one directly came from a book I previously revisited, which was Leading Men by Christopher Castellani, which I did ultimately decide to unhaul. It's not on my shelf anymore because I got some feedback on it from other people who had started to read it and were really struggling with it and not liking it, and that made me feel freed to unhaul it. But in the parts of it that I liked, it's about Tennessee Williams and one of his boyfriends. A character is introduced named John Horn Burns, and it mentions his novel, The Gallery. I thought this was a fictional character when I first heard about him, and then it slowly dawned on me as I tried to work my way through leading men that this was a real person, and The Gallery is a real book. So I looked it up, and The Gallery is apparently a forgotten gay classic. So I immediately ordered it. New York Review of Books had put out an edition of it. So here it is. And I have no idea when I will ever get around to reading it, but I think this is a perfect sort of library builder, something that would be aspirational to keep on my shelf and on my TBR because I might get to it someday. My Pride Month reading is going to be a little bit busy. I don't think it's going to happen this year. It certainly didn't happen last year or in the latter half of 2019. But it is something that I would like to keep around, especially since it is a forgotten LGBTQ classic. And uh, maybe someday I'll get to it. We'll see. Now, 
Finally, we get to a book that benefited from the way I changed my Pride Month TBR in 2020. So in 2019, we were watching a lot of Queer Eye, so I picked up a copy of Karamo, My Story of Embracing Purpose, Healing, and Hope. Obviously, since I mentioned Queer Eye, he is one of the stars of that show, the new incarnation of it that is on Netflix. You can see it right there. He does culture, but he rethinks the way culture is defined on that show. He comes at it from a psychological perspective, and he actually talks about that a fair amount in this book. So I didn't get to it in 2019. I did get to it in 2020 because, as I mentioned in June of last year, I decided to focus on Black queer stories, and his was one of those stories that I managed to fit in in the month of June 2020. So this is the only book from my April 2019 book haul that I have read. And by the way, if I had included the two library books, this would still be the only book <laughs> from my April 2019 book haul that I have read. That's kind of sad. I remember liking this book. It was fine. I'm not quite sure it needs to take up space on my shelf. I'm not dying for the space right now, but I think at some point this might be something that I'd be willing to trade in at my local used bookstore. Point just being, if I do need the space, I probably would be willing to part with this. It was interesting, I appreciated it, didn't love it enough to keep it, if that makes sense. So again, of the seven titles that were not library books that I hauled in April of 2019, I've only read one. I have a lot more work to do. And I'm gonna think about what I'm gonna do in terms of unhauling with Willa and Hesper Attic it's such a tiny book, it can sit for a while. And if I really ever need the space, then I will try to make a decision about whether or not I'm going to keep it. By the way, if you have read either one of those books, Willa and Hesper or Attic, please comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Help me make up my mind about whether or not they should stay and continue to take space on my shelf or if I should just release them into the wild, like little injured baby birds. I don't know, that's weird. Let's forget that I said that. And let's move on to my 2020 book haul, which is the one where I had a lot more success. The first book that I purchased in April of 2020 was A Woman of No Importance, The Untold Story of the American Spy Who Helped Win World War II by Sonia Purnell. I purchased this because I was doing the second round of the BookTube Prize last year, and I was on the nonfiction side, and this is one of the titles that I was assigned. It was not available through my library because at this time last year my library had completely shut down and it was not available to borrow online in my area either. So I ordered a copy from my local independent bookstore because I also really wanted to support my local independent bookstore at this time last year. You will see that a bunch of these books in my April 2020 book haul were purchased for that exact reason. And this was for the book to prize ostensibly, but really it ticked both boxes. So I did read this and I really enjoyed it. It was one of my favorite books from the nonfiction round of the book two prize. And I actually managed to fit it in right at the very end of the round. And I was worried about it. If you saw me <laughs> go through the most recent round of the book to prize, you know, I kind of stressed myself out and get down to the wire. And this was down to the wire. And it's so compulsively readable that I had no problem getting it in at all. So that is A Woman of No Importance, The Untold Story of the American Spy Who Helped Win World War II by Sonia Purnell. I would actually be interested in reading her other book, Clementine, The Life of Mrs. Winston Churchill. I bet that's really interesting. I'll have to try to remember to look for that. The next one is something I purchased not only to help my local independent bookstore when we were shut down last year, but it was on the long list for the Booker International, possibly even the short list. I don't remember which, but it caught my eye. It's The Enlightenment of the Green Gauge Tree by Shukufe Azar. I have not gotten around to reading it. I had really been excited about it at the time, but when I brought it into my library, but as I said, when I brought it into my library, I was in the middle of my book two prize reading. And by the time it was done, I was going into June for my pride reading and it just kept getting pushed off and then never happened in 2020. And it's funny that I'm doing this book haul revisit now because I was just looking at where it is on my shelf, which is somewhere roughly here. And if you're familiar with the way I do my TBR, I don't have a TBR cart. I would never want a TBR cart. I don't have a TBR pile. 
I just pull books that I'm wanting to read more slightly more out on the shelf so I can look at the shelf and kind of pick through and then everything is in its proper place. Because as somebody who used to work in a bookstore, it's really important to me to have the books in their proper place at all times. But anyway, point being, this was one of the titles that had been pulled out and I was just debating if I should push it in or leave it pulled out for my TBR purposes. And ultimately, I actually pushed it in. It's not something I'm looking to get rid of. I'll have it on my shelf, and I've heard good things about it. I would like to get to it at some point, but I'm not going to prioritize it anymore, if that makes sense. Another book I ordered from my local independent bookstore was Gachar Gochar by Vivek Shanbag, and I did manage to fit this in in 2020. It's only small. It is only 118 pages. And I liked it. I didn't love it. But again, it's really tiny. It's interesting enough that I don't mind it taking up some space on my shelf. Plus, it's not really taking up a whole lot of space anyway. And I did enjoy it. Didn't love it as I was hoping to, but I did really enjoy it. So that's part of my success story in April of 2020. Now, there are two books that are really actually one book. It's My Brother's Husband by Gengoro Tagame, Volume 1 and Volume 2. So I started by ordering Volume 1, obviously, because as part of my Read Outside Your Comfort Zone challenge from last year, I wanted to read genres that I don't traditionally engage with, and I had never read a manga. And my approach to do it was to find something that would appeal to my existing reading interests. So this is kind of an LGBTQ story. It's also an Asian story, and I, that appealed to me. So I ordered volume one and read it in a single afternoon and realized that these are actually really supposed to go together, even though they are sold separately. I believe there are editions that combine them into one volume, but obviously that is not what I did. So I immediately ordered volume two and it arrived by the end of the month when I did my book call and I also read it in a single afternoon. Really enjoyed both of them, which is funny to say because again it really seems like a single story. And it was a great way of expanding my horizons, exploring new territory, and trying a genre that I had never engaged with at all. So I really enjoyed both of those. Next, while I was looking for books that I could order from my local independent bookstore, to support them during lockdown, I ordered a copy of The Man Who Loved Children by Christina Stead. And for whatever reason, at that time, the paperback version of this was unavailable, except through a particular distributor that would not give the bookseller any kind of a discount. So the price of the book would really be only about a dollar or two less than the hardcover, which is 26 bucks, which sounds insane because I know there is a paperback of this book out there. But at the time, this was really all that was available. So we went with the hardcover. And that's fine, because I've heard really good things about this book. A lot of people love it. I believe Sean the Book Maniac has loved it. Possibly Doris from Aldi Books. Other people as well. And I'm really excited to get to it at some point. This was something of a library builder, not something I wanted to get to right away. So that's what it's going to continue to be. It will be on my shelf. Slipped out a little further than the rest of the title, so it is on my TBR. And I'm really looking forward to getting to it at some point. I've heard really good things about this book. Maybe I'll try to get to it at, in the latter part of 2021 as I sort of mood read my way through the year. I would love to get to this. So that's The Man Who Loved Children by Christina Stead. Then I got a copy of The Guest List by Lucy Foley. You'd kill to be on it. And I did read this book. I can't remember if I read it in April or May. It was somewhere in that zip code. It was read pretty much as soon as it came into my library. And it was fun. I really struggle with mystery thrillers, so I am always hesitant to bring them into my library <laughs> these days. I just don't like the modern state of mystery thrillers. And I really enjoyed this. It's kind of a fun twist on things. There are shifting perspectives. You don't even really know for sure who the murder victim is until about halfway through the book. I enjoyed it. It was fun. I'm not going to talk too much about the premise of it. Again, if you want to know more about it, you can watch the original April 2020 book haul, which is linked down below. Suffice to say, I did read it. I enjoyed it. I don't know that I enjoyed it enough to have it on my shelf forever. I might think about unhauling it at some point, but for now, it's a fun book that sits on my shelf, and I did read it. So there you go. And the final book in my April 2020 book haul was Valentine by Elizabeth Wetmore. 
I did not get to this in 2020, and part of that is that this book sounds like it has very heavy subject matter, and people I know who read it say that it was a really heavy read, and during lockdown and everything that went on last year, the riots, the election, you name it, I was not emotionally ready to dive into something that I knew was going to be really stressful, maybe a little bit depressing, all of that. So I didn't get to it. I still want to. I've heard really good things about it from people I know who have read it. So it's going to continue to be on my TBR. It will continue to be on my shelf, but I have not gotten to it yet. So of the eight books that I held in April of 2020, I read five of them. That's a pretty good track record. Five out of eight is certainly better than one out of seven. If you take both of them together, I read six out of 15 and that's not so good. So I have work to do on that. And again, I would love to hear if you have thoughts about any of these books. I'm not going to try to lift them all at once, but if you have thoughts on any of them, I would love to hear it. Anything you loved, anything you hated, anything you should think I should avoid, let me know. Put it in the comment section down below if you have recommendations based on these. I would love to hear them. That, I think, wraps up my book haul revisit. And one reason I really like doing this is that it helps me rethink books that I decide to bring into my library and what kind of a reader I am and what kind of books I tend to get to. I don't know that it has quite made an impact in my book purchasing yet, but the wheels are spinning and I'm learning about myself and that's great. So if you have followed along in my process of self-discovery, thank you for that. <laughs> and as always, your time is really appreciated and I will be back until next time. Happy reading.